Good luck. So I'm trying to recall all my notes. Um, let's try to play Facing Rook. See, do I need to put my rook behind this to continue pushing it? I assume I do. Um, hmm. We're going to make as much room as possible for this rook. As we try to anticipate where is their rook going. Hmm. Okay. So we've transposed into a static rook opening. Um, now, if their plan is to push this third foul pawn and then build Yagra, perhaps I need to push immediately. And if I do that, perhaps they open the diagonal and I get to learn what the heck this opening is. Um... Are there other ideas? Not that I see. <sighs> what in the world is this? I'm trying to make sense of it. I mean, I want to bring a gold to the center. Oh, they're going to play... Okay, that's interesting too. Good gravy. We have picked the sharpest possible thing, haven't we? Um, so they're going to open that file. The third file there. So that um, they can activate their rook. What can I do? In my mind, bringing my silver up the board makes sense, but it's risky. Bringing my gold up the board makes some sense, but it's also even more risky. Um, rather not do that. <sighs> I 
If I close this diagonal, surely silver, silver, pawn push, takes, silver takes, and I'm just broken. Which is not great. So potentially no, I'm not seeing any good sacrifices here.
I didn't expect that. Is this... I don't understand. Like... Oh! Oh, interesting. This is not what I'm supposed to do. This is not exactly what I'm supposed to do here. All right, so their intent, um, I'm not even sure. Not even sure what they're intending here. So building Elmo is one move faster than building Mino. But Mino would be more solid. I mean, I'm looking at this, trying to find how are they trying to win some tactical skirmish here. I'm not seeing uh, how I immediately lose the game. So we're going to continue castling, even though this doesn't look timed very well. Um, So bishop here, pawn push, bishop here, pawn push, pawn push, pawn takes bishop, pawn takes, gold takes. I got nothing. I get nothing for my bishop if I do that. Um, if my silver retreats, they drop a pawn somewhere on this file. Pawn push, pawn takes, silver takes, get a rook exchange um, at the cost of a silver, and I drop my rook, and God knows what happens next. All right, a bishop exchange is not happening right now, so we're going to solidify the castle a little bit. Um...
How do I continue solidifying my castle? Or do I? Is this as solid as my castle gets? I don't see a way to build up my castle any stronger than it is, so we're going to try this, even though I have no faith in it. <sighs> okay. Oh. Oh, shit. That. I missed. All right. Um, how do I make up for this? <laughs> how can I possibly overcome the deficit that I just gave myself? I only saw pawn rare. Um, well, I could pawn drop where I thought they were going to drop, right? Could this be so terrible? Um, So if I take the knight, silver takes, or er, lance takes, pawn in the file, silver drop in front of my bishop and rook. Yeah, I've got to do this. I take this gold, rook takes, and then what the heck happens next? I mean, a gold just patrolling the opposite side is no good. Sanjuvio. 
30秒。40秒50秒ちょsmell pain. I smell a lot of pain. That's about to land on my side of the board. Um... So of concern is that silver drop in front of the pawn, and I don't know how to counter it. Well, could be worse. Could be a lot worse. debating if he does that and should I choose to run my bishop somewhere where might I even want to run running is probably oh god really my head hurts <laughs> uh, I had... how do I make sense of this move三十秒。四十秒。五十秒。一、二、三、四、五。Yeah, this is disgusting. Oh, wait, um, hmm, maybe I did read correctly.
I'm not even sure which of many very strong ideas are best for him. I'm pretty sure, like, I'm losing five different ways here. It's just a question of which one is the most lost. I could be wrong. I hope I'm wrong. Oh, yeah, bishop exchange here would be pretty bad for me. Perhaps instead of this move, I needed to just drop a pawn right there. Um, my brilliant idea, if you can call it that, was that I was going to put a gold right in front of the rook. Um, it's not that bright. I wanted to think it was smart. This was my whole plan. Um, possibly, I don't know. I'm not even going to theorize anymore about what my opponent is or is not thinking because this is a pretty out there position. Welcome. Okay, so my next move I intended was gold takes pawn. I am so nervous about all the things he must be planning.
30秒。30秒。40秒。50秒。Oh, shit. Um. Yeah, I was kind of fixated on another section of the board. Okay, well, now what? <laughs> um, how do I assess how screwed I am? Thirty seconds.
30秒。40秒50秒1234いいよいHmm. Okay, so I see my mistake now. It's too late to correct, but I see it now. Maybe it's not too late to correct. <sighs> if I take that... Yeah, I don't know. I needed to do this last turn. Pawn takes, pawn takes, gold takes, knight takes. I'm dead. King moves, they take, I take, they do another drop. I don't know. Oh, it's the same tactic. Um, thirty seconds. Oh, yeah, that handles it. All right, well played. Oh, wow, that was tense. Oh, goodness. Oof. Sorry about that. All right. Wow. That was uh, an achievement on my end. Holy shit.
I keep claiming that I get lucky, but there's only so much luck that a person can have. <sighs> okay. Oh, I have a good <laughs> teacher <laughs> playing against me <laughs> every week or so. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> makes sense that, yeah. Okay, take it with the night. Uh, <laughs> it's very bad. Uh, okay, so I was concerned about, like, this? Hmm. Oh! It's hanging. <laughs> okay, shit. Yeah, now that makes sense. Um... Oh, well, we got... 59 moves into a game before fucking up, so that's an achievement. Well, yeah. Jeez. Yeah, this is complex. Um, I can't take the knight, right? Oh, yeah. I will defer to everything he says here because I... I'm so confused. Yeah. I give up my good pieces if I do that. Um, so, yeah, it's a question of what in the world do we do? And yeah, his attack is like super fat. Oh! Oh, right. Yeah. So even though I got like a zillion pieces covering my king, it's nowhere near enough. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. All right. Yeah, time zombie. I don't think we need to worry about that right now. Uh... Yeah, super confusing. Well, am I not forced? Well, yeah, my knight capture is just so bad that, like, I struggle to find any move here. My rook is kind of lost if I don't do that. Um, but his attack is like super fast, and giving him a knight only speeds it up. Oh. Wait. Um. Not sure about this. Uh, so, like, uh, sorry. If this. Yeah. Shit. Wow. Wow. Okay. Um. But yeah, you're better. Um. Uh, yeah. Uh, I need to not be so attached to material this game. Like, as a chess player, you hang on to every last pawn 
in Shogi, like, you can give away a rook sometimes. Oh. Huh. I'm trying to under... well... Yeah. Uh, I needed to expel this knight. Uh, your attack was powerful and predictable, although I didn't see it. Yeah. Wow, so, um, hmm. Yeah. No kidding. Ah, I need to practice more sume. It's like, yeah, that's, um, I mean, he must be right because he's three done and I am not. Um, yeah. <sighs> I get that my pieces are far away. Uh, somehow I. Just bad at Sume. <laughs> but yeah, strategically, my pieces need to be closer. Yeah. Yeah, so Shogi Harbor was mentioning there's like six concepts of, of game phases. Um, and like approaching a king and this sort of thing. Uh, yes, yeah. I saw this knight being a... Uh... Yeah, no, you're right. Um, um, I needed to react immediately to the night. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't, and it was just, that was that. Ah. Uh. I was thinking, like, this sort of thing. Um, but also, maybe Rook takes, although I didn't think you'd seriously take it. Um, um, oh. Yeah, then I could try to defend if uh, necessary, like this sort of stuff. Um, although there's a drop right here. Ah, okay, yeah. Was also unsure where to promote a rook. Um, so, like, either here or here. 
Um, oh, uh, Lance defense, uh, this is square. Okay. I completely missed that I could actually play this right now. Um... I mean, yes, attacking the knight is much better, but um, this is at least something I could try. <sighs> yeah, your way I should be attacking uh, the knight near my king. I agree, yeah. Yeah. All my pieces are a million miles away from uh, his castle. Uh, that's, yeah. Generating an attack is hard. I was surprised because usually his castles are very strong. Or at least much stronger than mine. Here I actually had a decently strong castle, I just fucked it up. Um, I agree. <sighs> Opening uh, play was good. Uh, I burned so much time on my clock. <laughs> yeah. Four minutes for move 14. Yeah. Yeah. I've not seen this before where your rook um, doesn't commit. Uh, so, like. Yeah, this is surprising. Um. Well, usually this file opens and things uh, go badly here. Uh, so I was uh, looking at like this, this, something like that. Um, I guess this first, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know. This is a calm position. Shogi has calm positions. Everything is closed. Yeah. But after like a minute or so. Yeah, I'll never get very far if I continuously doubt myself in the opening. 
like, yeah, sometimes I will embarrass myself, but um, burning all my clock time was kind of crazy. Even with Bioyomi, it being a possibility. Hmm. So I was concerned about this. <laughs> this never works. Okay. <laughs> like, yeah, okay. <laughs> Didn't even castle yet. All right. You can just, uh, do this if, like, all right. I can defend the edge of the silver if I have to. Yeah. Uh, right. Oh, well, that's, that's special. Um, uh, that, um, it's an okay defense. All right. Better to push the pawn in this particular thing. Oh, that's how we, okay. Yeah. Where is that in the beginner teaching materials? <laughs> yeah, that is cool. Uh, hmm. Like, uh, your second rank is empty. So the rook could move, uh, could move anywhere at any time. I struggle reading this. <laughs> Um, but yeah, this position is calm since, um, yeah, anyway. Yeah, I was actually impressed by how far I got here. Oh yeah, here he missed my pawn drop thing. This is what he had read out during the game. If I remember right, this is around when I slipped into Bioyomi. Um, trying to make sure I play this correctly. Yeah. 
Yeah, a lot of the complications that we faced on the opening are resolved now. Um, so it's just a matter of, uh, well, everything really. The material, the speed, uh, the strength of the castle. I mean, we're not quite in the end game. We're slowly getting there. So we both have some attacking chances here. <laughs> Engine says winning. <laughs> oh, that's cute. Uh, that is an exercise if there was one. Um, uh, do I have any... Th oh, questions. Um, gosh. Uh... Quickly run through the first part again. Uh, so um I suppose, in general, uh, is there some rule of thumb about when bishop exchange is something to consider? Um, I know it tends to favor... Well, I don't know a lot here. Um... Uh, Suppose both players want uh, to securely castle before offering such a thing. Um, I'm not even sure what move number I'm talking about, but... Uh, so, not necessarily. Okay, it's interesting. Yeah, I, I, okay, before castling is usually when he offers in his other games. Not that he has to, but just that tends to be when it happens. Easier to learn whether or not, um... To exchange the bishop or to let your opponent do it is um, to know which opening prefers such a bishop exchange. Um, oh, I see. Yeah, to know that, you have to get punished. <laughs> ah, makes sense. Cool. Yeah, experience will definitely dictate on that front. And we're still learning. Um, let me see. Do I have other questions? <sighs> Overall, this is an exciting game. Um, yeah, for example, an I for Bisha third file rook doesn't necessary or doesn't really want to exchange them because the silver will get stuck on 2-2. Two -two. Oh yeah, I've felt that pain before. Um... So wonder uh, how can I learn more about this sort of fluid castle, this thing. Um, uh, 
I'm really not sure. Um, I had an opponent yesterday do something similar. Um. <laughs> Fair enough, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, looks interesting. All right, fair. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. I think these are my questions until next time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thanks for the game. That was uh, quite an adventure. <laughs> All right, see ya. Uh, geez, wow, what an adventure. Um, yeah, I use that word over and over, but really, uh, we've achieved something. We've definitely achieved something. Um, Okay, to time a zombie's question. He's asking, before the game was I rated 1495. Before the game, I played another game. Uh, before that, I was 1495. So, like, we're still beginners. We're still going up and down and up and down. Even if somehow I accidentally cross that threshold, do I expect to stay there for many games? Not yet. Do I think I should be seeded into the tourney to showdown next time? I don't know. I think probably by the time the next tournament rolls around, probably I'll have made it, but I don't know. So, um, yeah, this this is special. Um, from uh my end. Yeah, so we had a couple earlier games where I struggled to put the bishop and rook in decent squares. Here I actually made sure that the pawn in front of my rook got somewhere. Um, yeah, I mean, I could refresh the widget uh, manually. Uh, but you're right, it doesn't automatically refresh. Uh, I think I have that... Well, maybe it does. Maybe every hour or so. I forget how that's set. But yeah, here, anyway, this game, I made sure to put my rook on a file and made sure to push the pawn in front of the rook. And um, Destiny was improvising a bit. I think we both wanted to learn some things from this game. And I do, like, both in chess and shogi improvise a bit. So I completely get where that comes from. That, like, these are just... Although I had an opponent yesterday do something quite similar. Um... And maybe they were improvising too, I don't know. But yeah, this sort of thing where like the golds both protect this 5-5 five, five square or 5-4 square and make it difficult for me to break in. It's interesting. And like here, I was like super stressed out about just any kind of idea, but it's premature here. Um, there are ways to deal with it. I need to have some confidence in myself that I can deal with such things. But also, maybe I should just, like, set up practice positions against an engine or something. And just have it school me a few times. And see, like, where are all the breakthroughs when I make a misstep? And then how do I back up and not misstep? Instead of playing entire games, maybe this could be, like, a miniature exercise. And, like, where do my generals belong? I don't know. Oh, um, yeah, I just played a game against Kektar yesterday. Um, that's definitely true. Uh, yes, by a fluke, uh, I did win that with my king in the center of the board. Uh, so take your moral victory and enjoy it. Yeah, this was, so I did a number of things correctly this game. I was super tempted to drop the pawn here, and then realized, well, 
with the pawn there, then I have to like push this all the way up to have any chances of breaking in. Um, so, yeah, I guess it comes with experience knowing whether this exchange offer is good or bad. Um, I know Destiny was improvising, but still, like, I was scared of this idea. But, um, I mean, his obviously his castle is incomplete. This would be a poor timing to try that, but I was still terrified, really. Um, because I don't know exactly at what timing, like, this sort of thing, or I don't know. It's all curious, but no, this is like... This almost looks like something Killer Ducky played once. Um, although I think that formation was like silver gold, silver gold or something. Or whatever. He played the duck leg opening with all his generals on the second rank. This isn't quite that shape. Um, so yeah, I sensed that like Destiny's castle was incomplete. And so I was trying to balance... The idea of, gosh, I would love to attack this instant against the notion of, if I mess up, I am in so much trouble. So, I've had a couple previous um, teaching ladder games where I've uh, put my pieces on inactive squares and then had to run away from his attacks. And this time, I just played a lot more aggressively. Um... Yeah, I don't know about this pawn move. There's a lot to learn. I should throw this game into Geeko and perhaps other engines and see what are all the interesting ideas that can arise from whatever this is. It's an exciting game. Yeah, both players terrified. I mean... <laughs> This, this is like tension here, right? This is unresolved tension. When you see me playing chess on stream, you see that um, I go out of my way to create lots of tension. Just deliberately leave as many things unresolved as possible. Not because it's a good chess strategy, but because it's good entertainment. Um... This game, that was not my object. But still, somehow we got a lot of tension just building up. Both players have a pawn in hand. The pawn structure, like, undecided here. Undecided here. Like, uh, uh, the only thing I had decided is that I'm building Mino Castle. Um... And then I'm putting my rook on a file, and I'm going to try to attack. Uh, that was the plan. Um, so yeah, it makes sense he tries to continue building a castle. Maybe this was ill-advised? I don't know. Again, this needs to be... If you're looking for the most theoretically accurate stuff to play against this exciting castle. Um, the Flying V formation, we'll call it. If you're looking for something to play against the Flying V, then you want to put it into an engine and see, like, what are all the possibilities and what things are not possible. And if you find something that's not possible and you really want to play it, back up a move or two to see, can you find a way to make it possible? Yeah, in hindsight... Like, pushing this edge... Well, you're asking either about this edge pawn or this one. Both of which I think would have been very reasonable moves. Uh, here, I was just terrified, like... So if rooks get exchanged, then very likely he's going to get my knight. And so if I don't want to be killed by a knight... To do something about the possibility of this hitting my king with a knight drop here. To do something about that, I've got to protect this 5-5 five, five square. And or just put a pawn on 4-4, four, 6-4, four, four, whatever you call these numbers. Got to put something on this square. 
Um, so this is why I tried to protect that. But also I was looking at an idea of wanting to put my bishop out here. And then if something bad happens, I can retreat the bishop. So this is why I uh, played this strange central pawn move that probably bit me later. Um, but yeah, no, you and Destiny are both accurate. That when he plays this, I need to play this. And even though I was terrified that like he could play this, uh, it's reassuring to know, like, here, this is just... Um, it's much too slow in this position. Um, I actually have an initiative on the other wing, so for this to work, some kind of miracle would be required. Um, I mean, I believe I'm capable of supplying such a miracle. Like, here, my most natural next move is this, right? So we don't do that. We do like this or something. But now that we've moved the gold here, we can't put the gold here anymore. Can't defend the bishop. So maybe this is okay. I don't know. It's mistimed. You don't play that right away, but... Um, so we want to keep the king and the rook separate. So like he spends time for this. And now what do I do? Do I move my king here? No, I don't move the king here because like I'm still afraid that the king goes back and this comes over. So, yeah, that's confusing to me. Um, I didn't want to be in this limbo of trying to figure out how far I want to castle my king. Um, yeah. Yes, you're absolutely right. That whatever I play instead of it has to be worth it. Um... And this reminds me, though, like, everybody talks about the Fuji system and how, in that particular system, the player is allowed to push the pawn twice. And I just assumed, because I don't know anything about this system, that, okay, if there's one system out there where that's allowed, then it has to be playable to play against that. But, um... Again, like, this is me just being, like, super naive as a beginner. Uh, I get that, like, my castle is supposed to involve this, but um, I just assumed that, like, I assumed a lot of things. There's a lot I just don't know. But I think, yeah, this is the balanced move in the position. This is what I should favor playing unless there's a strong reason to play something else. And I didn't have a strong reason to play whatever it was that I played. Um, so, yeah. Um, okay. Yes, so... Obviously, there's a lot... Like, as a beginner, I'm trying to absorb everything, and my mind just melts it all together. Um, but... Okay, that is worth clarifying. Where you leave the king sitting in the initial position, inform Mino, but uh, informing the Mino castle. I mean, you play this up, you build the Mino anyway, you just leave the king here. Um, inadvisable in this position, of course, because of the threat of a bishop exchange and a bishop drop right there. So in this particular position, like, that would be straight out. You don't do that here. You don't leave the king here and, like, allow that. Um, but, yeah, in the Fuji system, the position's significantly different somehow. Um, as they're building Anaguma. And, yeah, it was, this is how in the 21st century you get an opening. It is... I'm probably messing up which Fuji this is named for. I don't know. But this is how, in modern times, anyway, you get an opening named for you. Is you do something ambitious, um, leaving your king back there, and trying something that hasn't been tried before. 
Um, needs to be well timed. Oh, and apparently now effective countermeasures have been found. So already it's a historical artifact in some sense, but even if the countermeasures are effective, maybe it's still playable to some degree. Okay, so yeah, my mistake. But still in the 20th century, in our modern era. Um, not Rewa, but, you know, the 20th century, you still get openings named after you. Okay, thank you. I do appreciate the context. I'm embarrassed that, like, there's so little I know, and so much I should know. I'm doing my best to um, respect the game. Um, yeah, so what else is there to consider here? Um, so he, like, yes, this innovation um, by Destiny is something he's trying to innovate. But I'm labeling the Flying V, but it might have some other name. I don't know. But the golds do not support each other in this castle. Gold supports the silver, the silver supports the gold, but that's not the strongest shape ever. Um, uh, but yeah, here it was kind of inspired in some way, but here I was thinking this... I don't know. But maybe somehow I have a breakthrough. No, this can't possibly break through at this time. I don't know. I'm not the world's leading... Well, maybe I am the world's leading the rotation in this particular opening against this particular formation. Maybe I am the first. But, um... There's a lot to read out there that didn't actually get played in the game. But this was a good countermeasure against my Mino, uh, preventing me from completing the Mino. And here I just wandered. Um, yeah, and then in the game, uh, Destiny had misread this, thinking that I couldn't play the bishop drop here. Probably because of this position. My guess is that he got this far, which I meant during the game. Well, actually, like, suppose I didn't have the pawn drop and I had to do this, and all my pieces are offsides. Is this terrible for me? I'm not sure. I thought it was during the game. I really felt like this sort of attack... And this sort of thing coming in was kind of a disaster, but um, maybe it's playable? I don't think so. So I think I have to play the move I did during the game, which was effective. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Again, a lot of that has to be fed into a computer. And yeah, Destiny, I covered the rest of the game. Um, so the other focal point here. Ignoring my super slow moves is that if I am going to defend, now is the time to do it. And he's got one fewer piece in the attack. So he's absolutely right. So everything he said is spot on. Um. <sighs> And, yeah, this opening was just so confusing. Um, also, uh, just remember that, like, my pieces can support each other. Like, the lance all the way in this corner of the board does attack the other corner. As a chess player, I'm like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and that's as far as it goes. No, it actually hits the corner. So... Um, I didn't even consider that this corner could be attacked from that corner. Um, but yeah, that's actually good. Difficult thing about playing me is they can't prepare... Yeah, 
I do play a lot of different things. Basically, I play some opening for, I don't know, some number of games. And either it goes well or it goes poorly. Um, and, um, I mean, sometimes within that time span, I will just essay a different opening. Just for the heck of it. Um, but, yeah, usually, at least the last couple weeks or so, I've been playing, uh, trying to play the center file pawn. In this particular occasion, because we had a previous game with Destiny, um, where he had played this and this and this, and I eventually played this, I eventually put the pawn here, but if I had just put it there directly, um, that would have been a much more interesting game. So I tried to transpose, yeah, and he elected not to do this crazy stuff, which, um, that's his move here. Yeah, so some previous game we had something similar to this, maybe not exactly this, but uh, he observed that this would have been very strong, I think. No, I'm confusing this with a different player. Some opponent I had played something similar to this in some tournament game against me. Um, and we resolved that um, this attack is much stronger than this attack. I've been uh, using Takadori's book lines to study. I'm, I very much wish that I had. Um, I intend to. Believe it or not, um, yeah, I've, I've took a look at it. I need to re-review it. I really do. Um, yeah, mostly, uh, these days, I know, yes, I can read books and work my way through them, and I should do that a bit more, or rather the book lines, I can use those as good references. Uh, somehow I find it a bit more engaging right now to be watching strong players play games. Um, so I've been following folks um, who do videos on YouTube. It's like moriuchi has got his channel with subtitles, well, with automated captions. Um, there's um, Eriko, who's got automated captions. And um, I'm... Oh... Muranaka, who puts English subtitles, and God bless him for that. Uh, yeah, this honestly, if you just watch Muranaka, uh, you can probably guess what I'm going to be trying next. So, yeah, those are so excellent. And lately, I've been just amused watching some of the videos, and like they'll set up a formation where like suddenly they got all their pieces attacking everything in a file i like how did you notice that you could put all these pieces together into this particular shape and now suddenly the file opens up like that is some master level play it really is just to like line up all of your attackers on one file and like multiple players this week have done videos and they've put the arrows in the circles there, and you see, like, everything in the file is attacked. I'm like, how did you know that this is going to happen? That's experience for you. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I don't blame you. But yeah, but all these... If you want to, like, watch their videos, they'll give you some idea of what I'm considering trying next. Um... I need to make more time to actually get through Takadori's book lines because that's a more serious way to study openings than like me just watching videos for both education and entertainment. Um, uh, somehow, yeah, I just need to work my way through the books or book lines and reference materials and such. Um, somehow when I read materials, I don't absorb it as well as if 
like there's that whole interaction going on with it. And the solution for that is that I need to get myself like a table shogibon or something, like a set and a board, and just do the kinetic thing with moving the pieces on the board, hearing them snap, referencing the book or the other material, and playing the things on the physical board. That's what I've done with chess. That's what I need to do to actually retain stuff with shogi. Um, it is true that when I read the reference materials, I'm constantly questioning it. Um, but it's a lot easier to question things if you can move around the pieces, either on a digital board or a physical board. So yeah, at some point I do need to do that. But wow. Uh, this, yeah, even for, yeah, so I had tried, yeah, meditating a bit before the game, trying not to psych myself out too much. Uh, did it work? Maybe. I don't know. It worked better than previous encounters, and I guess that's what matters. Yeah, I was so confused. There were so many things I could do. Um but to keep my options as open as possible, this needed to be here. Um, can get a decent board, um, for example, from Nintendo with uh, plastic pieces and Katsura. Yeah, that's an interesting point. Um, yeah, that'd be something that'd be portable too. I've debated like, I think there's a local workshop. I could just mint my own plastic pieces and such, but it's probably much easier to get them from Nintendo. Um, but yeah, what a game. Oh, yeah, I guess I do have one more comment here, don't I? So, this position... Um, I think Destiny gave me a lot of credit for playing this game well. I don't actually understand, other than me not losing the silver, what's going on here. Now, obviously, the it resolves the way it did in the game, and Destiny was like, I don't think you can play this bishop here, and he had moved a bit quickly, and that's okay. Um... So maybe because of this bishop move that happened in the game, um, yeah, that might have inspired him to just do the gold capture, trying to break open this file. Um, but, like, I didn't want to put my pawn here at all. I feel like, yes, um... It behooves my opponent to get this pawn promoted, or get their rook promoted, or something promoted. But, um... Yeah, I guess I did have some sort of drowning sensation here. And needed to do this. And they dropped on the square I wanted to drop on, so yeah. I guess I just got fortunate that, um... This all worked out. I mean, I always have the sense that, like, I have to play these moves or else I'm lost. And I play it and then lose anyway. But here, this sense of, like, there's only one move actually was correct. Um, so I was expecting this. And this is a different game. But also... Here, this is a different game. There's a lot of ways to get a different game here. Um, so I'll have to study this a bit more, see what happened. But I should watch. Um, can I just push the pawn? And, okay. Um, can't I just push the pawn and release my lance instead? What position are we referring to? Is this the position? You're asking, like, can I push the pawn or take the knight or something? 
Instead of the bishop to one five. Okay. Um, let me see. I mean, I. This is the point at which I played bishop one five, but there's other ideas. Take with the lance. Okay. So during the game, this is what concerned me. Should I have been concerned? I'm not sure. Um, actually, wait. So although I was concerned. Um, how concerned should I be? The point is that um, if this takes, I have this drop. So they can't take the lance straight away. But they have to have some sort of other attack. Um... Yeah, I don't know. Also during the game, I was looking at stuff like this. Oh, wait, but then they bring this gold up. Or the silver up. Um, yeah, I was thinking if I could lure this forward, this is a square where I can start dropping or threatening to promote on or something. But no, if they do this drop... Um, Yeah, I don't know, it's complicated. I don't think I managed to take the square by force. If I manage to move the rook here, uh, well, you're referring to the other position. Which is interesting. Um, then they could move the silver. Yeah, it's getting very difficult. Um... It's pretty wild. And then, like, this manages to... I'm not sure. Again, like, a lot of this you'd probably want to check with an engine. Um, yes, this is a pretty wild position. But more generally, I needed to, like, play this sort of threat. <laughs> I shouldn't have played a bishop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to go all the way back up the stack to the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah this is pretty wild. And complicated. Um, yeah. Man, a chess player in me. Ah, stubborn. Doesn't like leaving things unresolved. But this is just super, super complicated. Um, so yeah, diving into all those complications isn't quite worth it. Yeah. It's exciting watching other players' games and trying to resolve all these absolutely crazy combinations that take place. Uh, but in practice, if you're trying to improve your own game... That's not very practical. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is a cool game, though. Uh, I might try this weapon out at some point. Um, I might have a, a different castle to accompany it, but like. I mean, I don't usually play Ibisha, but, like, watching this, I kind of want to now. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, it's funny. We've got, I've gone, like, hundreds of games on the server without playing Static Rook. Or, and looking at this, I'm like, hey, you know, this, this is kind of exciting. If this kind of castle 
um, leads to an interesting position. Surely there's lots of castles that are interesting with this. Um, yeah, there's so much to study. I've played it a few times. Like, in my first, I don't know, 20, 30 games, you could probably find me playing it. Eventually, I'm like, uh, I guess having watched, um, what was it, Road to Shodan, and Wojtek comments on how some of the static rook openings, not all of them, but some of them, the theory is just, you don't want to try to memorize it all. There's just too much. Um, I'm like, you know what? I can believe Wytek. Uh, let, let's let's just cut Static Rook out of anything I have to learn right now. We're going to deal with that at some point, but we don't have to. So, yeah. Of, of course, I have to prepare to play against this sort of thing, but... Yeah, play something else. At least for now. So this is what happens when we play something else. We get exciting games. And if we lose, it's not because we forgot the move. It's because um, we just have more to learn. But yeah, if you look at my last so many games, I have not played Static Rook in a very long time. And it's been such a rewarding experience, just learning other stuff. We can always go back later and learn and memorize all this, uh, the not-so-fun things to memorize. Um, but yeah, I think having looked, having watched the Road to Shodan, um, and having seen a number of Hidechi's videos, I'm like, Wojtek has a really good point. Let's try something else. And yeah, that's when I started playing Fourth File Rook just exclusively. And that was an adventure. Um, and here we are today. Uh, but yeah, this seeing this kind of makes me want to go back and just try it. Not for the sake of smurfing and staying inside the next tourney to showdown. No, that's not my intent. No, I don't really intend to stay in the... I don't know. Like, obviously it's the tournament organizer's call. But if they're looking for more players for their higher class event, uh, I'm willing to go through the suffering of it. <laughs> but maybe I should try to promote first. Yeah. Yeah. Might be lucky enough to graduate back to Tourney to Show. <laughs> That's the thing. It's like, probably it makes sense for me to just actually uh, make Shodan first before promoting. And maybe like mid season or something. Who knows? But the notion of promoting backwards is kind of special and probably discouraged. Um. So, yeah, I should just keep learning stuff, take things at my own pace. Um, very appreciative that Destiny puts this ladder together. It's good for so many players. Um, I was watching some players do commentary uh, post-game analysis on their game the other day. It's great. Just, it's a wonderful thing. Oh, GLGR put this together. Okay. Well point. Uh, very good point. You've clarified a number of questions along the way, but you're right. He's um, the one who puts this together. But this is still a very good thing. And yeah, I'm glad to have these opportunities. Encourage more players to uh, join and get games uh, and teach other players how to play better. And if you happen to get a high enough rating, you get the Destiny pairing, which is pretty exciting. Um... Yeah, and the WSL here refers to a World Shogi League Championship, and he's just had an outstanding performance there, so this is good. Um, yeah, so... Wow, yeah, that, I was surprised. Um, yeah, obviously, uh, everybody watching knows this here, but... Just to point it out, 
there it is. So this is the thing that justifies the variation. Um, and yeah, then like um, bishop and gold cover these squares, and if he tries to keep out the bishop, this is possible. So just in case that wasn't said, now it's been said. Um, yeah, it's a uh, tourney to showdown is more like a tourney than a place to learn. Yeah, I kind of get that sense. Um, players need to do post-game analysis together for it to work. And there has to be a routine to it. Um, I think uh, the good news with that is that like the higher profile games, the ones that have been cast by um, streamers, uh, have received an overwhelming amount of comments. Uh, just a lot of ideas that both players uh, could have tried, in addition to the things that they saw and critiquing the way they think about things too. Yes, yeah, so these playoffs or other games that have been cast have been pretty great. Um, yeah, I wonder... Uh, I wonder... Like, obviously, there's not much of a language barrier with the tourney to Shodan. Every, almost everyone there speaks fluent English. Um... However, the time zone thing kind of makes it an issue, so it's difficult for players that are so many time zones away from each other to commit time after the game for post-game commentary. So sometimes that's either distracted or rushed or whatever. Um, somehow this seems to work out better. Yeah, and it did go on for a while. Um, I don't so much mind the number of games. Obviously, I'm playing in the Supernova, which 56-player round robin. Um, trying to get through that. We're going to see how many games I can get done. But uh, so I don't mind having there be a lot of games um, because players are just going to get the games done at their own pace. Oh, I had a corollary to this. There was something else that I did mind that I was going to follow up with. Um, yeah, I think something about time zones or scheduling or something. Just I mind when it's a lot of work to get the games to set up. There we go. That's uh, the corollary. Anyway. Um, yeah. Yes, I'm so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's amazing, just like the Europeans are willing to stick with uh, the rest of our time zone madness. Oh, <laughs> oh, I forced this. This is good. Uh, wow. Um, yeah, because by the time I've gotten this on the board and like this Yagara idea is not, or this directly, I don't know. I, I kind of forced you into something that, um, like this. So I was trying to prevent the uh, Yagara shape from forming because I had such a bad time against that last time. So yeah, this is uh, very exciting. <laughs> yeah. Like, hmm. So, perhaps a bit of luck was involved uh, getting this far, and... Yeah, I don't know. If pawns get exchanged, there's... Like, so hypothetically, if this gets played over and this gets pushed, and if I can exchange pawns, then I have a pawn drop here, which is a mess. So, like, it's already committed in some sense. I'm not sure at what point... This is committed to Ibisha, but yeah, that was pretty cool. Not intentional, but it's just the byproduct of me trying to guarantee that my rook gets active for once. 
it uh, was very effective. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, yeah, it's good having these teaching games because, and as a chess player, like as I'm doing games against opponents and they want me to point out ideas, I do in my games against them improvise a little bit and I learn things about the opening too. So it's good to improvise um, when there's not like tremendous stakes on the line. Um, yeah. This is great. Um, so yeah, thanks everyone for making this possible. Um, I was glad to have a good game this time. I mean, they were all good games, but this was a different kind of good game where we got to learn more from it this time. Other games we did learn a lot. This game, um, we got to focus on what things we need to work on next. Yeah. Yeah, there's no, like, money or tons of anything on the line. There's just reputation. Um, and so, yeah, I, I get that. Uh, yeah, I've had some games where there's been really low stakes, but I'm afraid of losing it anyway. <laughs> the strongest 1Q on 81 Dojo. Uh, I'm not sure if that's accurate. <laughs> that's what Supernova is there to decide, right? But yeah, okay, one of the strongest. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I'm up there somewhere. I had my rating at 1495 earlier today. Uh, before my Supernova game. But yeah, I'm definitely up there. I'm learning stuff. I'm going to be a good beginner, and then we're going to promote out of beginner at some point. Um, yeah, Abigail's super strong. Shimon is, like, ridiculously strong. Um, <laughs> that guy in Supernova is going undefeated. <laughs> good for him. I hope he gains lots of rating points. <laughs> okay. Because, yeah, uh, that's something. Um, yeah, I can't really comment too much on that, can I? Um, maybe as I know more, I'll be able to comment more. Um, yeah, so this was instructive, too. Um, so... Uh, yeah, this is a possibility, and not only is that a possibility, it's kind of forced here. Never seen this before, um, but it makes sense. Obviously, there's going to be some new inventions that happen in each game, but... Oh, yeah, two ideas occurred to me. One is that bishop that I pointed out in our post-game analysis. Two... This scared me a bit. Although this is like super far from the king and that's a bad move. Don't do it. But that concerned me. Because um, it's like super far from the king. You don't do that, especially when things have gotten this crazy. Yeah, but... I just got overwhelmed. Um, so now I know that at least this pawn drop... Um, this is like playable for both players. So this is a resource I can try out in one of my future games if somehow I let my opponent promote their bishop and I'm in this kind of situation. Like, this pawn drop is a resource. Now that I know that this trapping the rook is just atrocious. Um, yeah, like, it's a different thing Like if this knight immediately promotes or something like that, but here... My mobility just goes way down, and I'm committing to losing my knight. So, at a time when my king's already under attack, um, so this is not at all good. Yeah, there's usually, yeah, shogi without pawn drops or pawn sacrifices would be far less interesting than it is. Um, I should look more for games like that. Um... Because, yeah, it's the pawn sacrifices that determine when we, like, transition out of the opening. 
into some middle game and then quickly transition to an end game thereafter. In some cases, not always, but things start to loosen up as pawns and pieces get sacrificed. It's just a beautiful thing. Well, yeah, what a game. What a game. Um, so I guess uh, maybe I'll wrap it up there. Uh, thanks, everyone, for watching. Thanks, uh, Destiny, for the game and post-game analysis. And uh, I guess I'll see you all next time.